Recently, we as a community started AutoDev, a fork of Bolt.new that aims to implement a bunch of much needed features, including being able to use any large language model, like local ones with Olama. Bolt.new itself only supports using one LLM, Claude 3.5 Sonnet, but so many people want to use local LLMs, especially because with them, you never have to pay a dime or hit those nasty rate limits ever again. And that's why adding the ability to use other large language models is the first thing that I added to Autodev. And today, I'm gonna to give you some tips and tricks for using local LLMs to build your full applications for you. And together, we'll build an application within Autodev using a local local LLM to chat with an AI agent that I have built in N8N. And the best part is we're going to be using a smaller model, Quen 2.5 Coder 7B, to create this full application. And it actually does really, really well. And this kind of smaller model can really be run on almost any computer. To go along with this, this Sunday, November 10th at 7 p.m. Central Time, I will be doing a live stream on my YouTube channel. I am super pumped for this. And the reason I'm mentioning this here is because I'm going to take the application that I'm about to show you how to build with Quen 2.5 Coder and take it to the extreme by building it with 25 different LLMs. You heard that right, 25 different large language models, 10 of them through APIs and then 15 of them that I've installed on my computer with Olama so I can see what kind of power I can really get with unlimited usage for free on my machine. I am not going to sugarcoat the fact that you still will generally get the best performance with massive closed source models like Claude 3.5 Sonnet and GPT-40. But hitting those nasty rate limits sucks. And so I really want to test out other LLMs for you, especially local ones, to see what kind of power we can get. And so this video is in a sense a teaser for my live stream on Sunday where I'll be doing that with a bunch of different models. But I also do want to take the time right now to give you some very key tips and tricks for getting the most out of your LLMs and working with Autodev and really just Bolt.new and other AI coding assistants in general. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. All right, so here we are in the README for Autodev. Now this tutorial that I'm about to show you with using local LLMs and tips and tricks for that, that assumes that you already have Autodev up and running on your machine. If you don't yet, this README, which I'll have a link to in the description of this video, has very good instructions on the full setup and also how to run this both with Docker and without Docker. And there's even a video on my channel that I'll link right here where I show how to get everything up and running with Docker, including installing Olama and getting your local LLMs on your machine with that. And so definitely check that out if you haven't already, if you don't have it up and running. But if you do, now we can dive into what it looks like to run things with local LLMs because I got a couple of very important tips and tricks for you to make it work really, really well no matter what you are going to develop. All right, the first big tip for using local LLMs with Autodev is you want to avoid the issue where the model doesn't actually open up the web container and create the files within that. What do I mean by that? Well, just check this out right here. I'm running the base Quen 2.5 coder without the fix that I'm about to show you right now. And if I have it create an app, watch what it does. It just has a regular chat window here. It doesn't open up the web container with all the code and the preview for you. And so it's kind of useful here because it's creating good code, but there's no magic of bolt.new here. This web container, which I opened up manually just now, is completely empty, there's no preview. We basically could have just chatted with Olama within the terminal and gotten the same results here. So not very great. But there's an easy fix for this. And the reason this problem happens is actually because of something pretty silly with Olama. For some reason, the default context length for any Olama model is 2048 tokens. And that unfortunately is not big enough to fit the bolt.new prompt. So you squeeze in something and it loses some of the context and that's why it doesn't understand how to interact with this web container. But luckily with Olama, there is a very easy way to create a slight variation of any model you want that has an increased context length and you can use that along with any other model that you pulled from Olama. And that's what I'm about to show you right now. So I'm back in the readme because I already have a section on how to do what I'm just about to show you right here. So super important note on running Olama models and this has the instructions on how to create a slight variation of any Olama model that has that increased context length so that it magically works 100 times better within bolt.new and I've tested this myself with multiple different models and it really does do, do the trick 
of fixing this huge issue. And so all you have to do is create a file called model file, or it can really be any name at all. And I'll show you an example in a little bit here. And you just put in these two lines. And so it's from, and then the model ID of your Olama model that you want to use within Autodev. And then the parameter for the number of context, that is where you define the new context limit. And so as long as you do something above 8,096, because that's the default limit for bolt.new, you are good to go. So this number doesn't specifically have to be 32,768, but that's just what's recommended in general when I did some research on this earlier. And so you add this into your model file, and then all you have to do is run this command right here. And like I said, I'll show you an example right now. So within my model files folder that I have here, my bolt.new repo, you'll have to create this yourself. I'm not pushing it into GitHub. I have this file right here called quen 2.5 coder. And so the model ID specifically for me in this case is quen 2.5 coder 7B because that is the Olama model that I want to increase the context limit on. So I have that set up right here in this file. And then I have a terminal right here where I'll just run the command Olama create dash F. And then my file is called quen 2.5 coder. And then the name of the model that I want to give, I'm giving like essentially a new model ID in Olama. I'm just going to give it the exact same name, but with Autodev as a part of it. So I know that this is a model I can use for Autodev. So I already have this created actually. So if I do an Olama list, you can see all my models here. And just like all of them that I pulled from Olama, I just have this one sitting alongside it right here. Quen 2.5 coder Autodev 7B. All right, so you'll run that. And then when you go into your bolt.new instance, let me go and create a new chat here and select Olama. The model is gonna be available just like any of the other ones that you pulled. And this one, if I select build a to-do app in React, you'll see right away that it is working way, way better. It opens up the code window. It's creating package.json within the web container. Everything's working just like it would with Claude 3.5 Sonnet or those larger models because we now have the right context length. The sponsor of today's video is FlexiSpot and this wonderful chair that I am sitting in right now. Out of all the AI platforms I could have showcased like I usually do, I chose FlexiSpot, something kind of different, for a personal reason. For the past couple of years, I've dealt with sciatica, which is very, very painful. I would not wish it on my worst enemy. And one of the biggest reasons that I got it is because I was sitting for hours and hours every single day with not the best posture and not the best chair for years. And that does a number on your back. Having an ergonomically correct chair is super important for your health. So if you are sitting in a chair for hours and hours with your day job, I would highly recommend getting a good chair protecting your spine. And FlexiSpot is one of the best chairs for that. So I'll have a link in the description to get the chair. If you use the code C750 at checkout, you'll get a $50 discount. And FlexiSpot is doing a Black Friday promotion on November 13th and 17th at 9 a.m. where the first 20 customers have a chance to get their chair for free. So definitely go ahead and check that out. All right, so before we dive into creating a full application with Quen 2.5 Coder 7B, I wanna mention a couple of really important things quick. First of all, what I'm about to show you here, I'll be going pretty quick, especially through setting up the N8N agent and getting that hooked into the web app. But on my live stream this Sunday, November 10th at 7 p.m. Central Time, I'll be diving into it in a lot more detail. So come to the stream with any questions that you have on this or really anything on Autodev in general because I'd love to chat with you there. The second thing that I want to mention is there's no getting around the fact that you will run into some issues with local LLMs that you don't with the bigger models like Claude and GPT. And that's just the simple truth due to the fact that smaller models aren't able to handle the larger prompts of AI coding assistance, not just Autodev. And so there's some issues that come up due to that. And there's just so many requirements for creating all these files and organizing it within the web container. But if you want a very good large language model that is still super, super affordable and open source, I would highly recommend using DeepSea Coder version 2, the 236 billion parameter version. You can get this either through Open Router or through the DeepSeek API directly. And this model absolutely kicks butt. And let me show you why you'd want to use this over another model like Claude. If I look at the pricing here in Open Router, it is actually cheaper than even GPT-40 mini by a little bit. So 14 cents per million input tokens and 28 cents per million output tokens. This is so much better than Claude because Claude is $3 for every 1 million input tokens and then $15 
for every 1 million output tokens. And so Deep Sea Coder is like more than 20 times more affordable than Claude. And it's gonna be something pretty similar for GPT as well. So way cheaper and it's still open source. And also the benchmarks for Deep Sea Coder version two are incredible as well. So super good performance. I would highly recommend giving this a shot if you want to still run Autodev locally and not have to worry about rate limits on their commercial platform, but have a good model that's gonna get you through any kind of web app that Claude would be able to as well. So yeah, I would highly recommend this. And with that, we can dive into creating with a completely local LLM because there's still a time and place for that as well. It's just so cool, the kind of power we can have just running right on our machine. And you could run a deep sea coder locally as well. 236 billion parameters is pretty massive. So that's why I'm focusing on some smaller models here. So let's go ahead and dive right into that. All right, so now we'll go through creating a full application as a fantastic starting point using a local LLM. I'm gonna show you my big tip here, which is is to start really simple and iteratively get more complicated to avoid the most amount of hallucinations possible and make sure that you don't have something that's broken right out the gate. The strategy actually works really well, even with larger models. Like if you're using Claude 3.5 Sonnet on the commercial Bolt.new, this is still a good strategy to develop very complex applications by starting really simple. And so I have a very simple prompt here to create a basic Next.js chat interface. And I'm using my Autodev version of Quen 2.5 Coder 7B that has that extra context link. So we'll send this in and it'll start by creating a very simple application that's gonna be pretty ugly at first, but that's okay because it's gonna be our starting point and then we'll get more complicated. So I'll pause and come back once this is done. All right, so just like 15 seconds later, this app is fully complete. And like I said, it's gonna look pretty ugly right now, but let's see if it actually works pretty well. So I'm gonna say hi, and then it said, you said hi. Okay, so it doesn't reply with a basic sample message. It actually like repeats back to me what I said, which, that's pretty cool, okay. So super, super simple at this point, but this is now where we can iterate on it to make it something more complicated. So I've got a second prompt here that I'm gonna paste in, and then this is where I start to get detailed with the UI and UX requirements. And so I have things like colors defined specifically. I wanna to describe to the LLM how to design things to really make it what I'm looking for. So you can give it things like colors and give it things like, I need this kind of padding and these kind of measurements for my views. That actually helps a a lot again even if you are using more powerful LLMs so if you know those kind of design details you can really guide it well so I'm gonna send this in it's gonna start making these improvements here and I'll pause and come back once that is complete. All right, so it is complete and we now have a preview that is looking much, much better as far as a chat interface goes. So I'll say hi and just make sure that everything is working. Yeah, we even got like a little loading indicator here and then it sends a sample message. This is looking fantastic. All right, so now what I wanna do is just for demonstration purposes here, I'm not gonna make something super, super complicated. So I'm just gonna iterate on this one more time. And so I'm going to paste in another prompt here, and it is actually going to be using an N8N agent API endpoint so that I can talk with an AI agent directly within my bolt.new application here. So I'll even show you what I've got here. So I have this N8N agent that I have built on another video on my channel. And there is a webhook entry point here where essentially I have this production URL and I have this test header authentication that I'm going to delete once I finish recording this video. So I just have it hard coded into the prompt for Autodev right now. Uh, but this is the entry point that uh, talks to my agent that's hooked up with RAG with a PG vector database here. And then I respond with the output. I'm gonna consume that here in my uh, application that I'm building with Autodev. So I tell it this is your API endpoint. I describe to it the payload it needs and the authorization. And then also I tell it that the output field is gonna be what I get in the JSON that has the response from the LLM to display to the user. So I'll send all that in and we'll see if it can actually update the application properly to talk to my large language model over in my N8N workflow. All right, so interestingly enough, it like messed up the styling completely when I prompted it this last time here, but I just had to tell it like, hey, you messed up the styling and then it corrected itself and it looks good again. So now we can test it out and see if we can actually talk to a large language model now. So when I say hi, it shouldn't just give me a sample message, it should actually invoke my workflow. And there we go, I got a response. Hello, how can I assist you today? Beautiful, and if I go into my N8N and go to the execution history, 
Sure enough, just right now, it is 3.50 my time. I have this execution where it said, hello, how can I assist you today? So this is looking wonderful. And I can even ask it a question that would force it to go out to its knowledge base to answer. So I can say, what are the action items from the meeting? I just have one meeting note here in my vector database. And so I'll ask it and see what I get for a response here. Let's make sure that this is fully working with the N8N workflow. And sure enough, it is. This is the right answer. I've been using this as an example for a few of my different videos. So I'm very, very familiar with what the right answer here. And that is looking good. All right. So we have fully built out a really good starting point for a chat widget to talk to an AI agent N8N. Super, super cool stuff, all using Quen 2.5 Coder, a 7 billion parameter local LLM with a llama. So there you have it. We have used a small local LLM with Autodev to create us a full project that is a very good starting point for us that we could easily take forward and turn into a production ready application. And also I have other content on my channel for deploying these kind of apps. I'll link one right here. And also a lot more content coming out on Autodev, including tutorials for things like how to contribute and more on how to deploy these kind of applications and work with Docker and things like that. So a lot more content coming. I am so excited for the future of Autodev and how much it is enabling us to do, especially with local LLMs. If you're excited about that too, and you appreciated this content, I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. And with that, I will see you in the next video.